everybody. It's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, May 31st, and uh, we had a real big rally here at the end of the day. We'll talk about it in a moment, but uh, for the month, a big month for the markets. Uh, you never heard me say sell in May and go away. It is uh, a nice little phrase, and it rhymes, and it's cute, but only price pays, and we're always going to take our action from what the market does and what the market tells us. So take a let's take a look. We'll start out with the ETFs as usual, and then we'll go on and take a look at a couple of the crypto markets. Uh, the S&P 500, as I mentioned in the last half hour in particular, is really where we saw a big rally here today. We started out the day uh, really getting hit hard after that initial gap higher. And let's just isolate today because uh, it was really a uh, volatile day, as I just mentioned. Uh, anyways, let's look at it on a five-minute time frame. Here is our, our beginning of the day. We gapped up, got hit hard, all the way down to daily S2 at 519, and then rallied almost 10 points here off those lows. So big rally at the end of the day, saved the market from uh, closing on a negative basis. We do have a declining five-day moving average, and I would expect that next week, uh, if that was the end of this pullback, well, what I'd really like to see is some kind of, um, uh, you know, just a little settle down after that final half hour, make a higher low and then get going higher. Um, you could say that the market held the 20 day moving average and I guess be accurate. But uh, if you bought at the 20 day moving average at 523, it didn't feel like it was holding it when it was down at 518 and change. We have a rising 20 and 50 day moving average, which is why we give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers overall but are cautious with a declining five-day moving average. So going into next week, I still am a little bit cautious. Want to see a higher low in that five-day moving average flatten out before it uh, potentially continues on to new all-time highs. The good news is we did undercut this prior peak and uh, apparently trapped some short sellers in there pretty hard this afternoon uh, who got squeezed into the close. So um, again, going into next week, just a little bit of caution because we are below a declining five-day moving average. NASDAQ also had a big rally, but not enough to overcome a loss on the day. It was only down two pennies, but still a loss on the day. Uh, and as we noted, uh, a good month overall for these markets. So um, the S&P, I'm sorry, the NASDAQ rather, also undercut the prior resistance and held above it on a closing basis. We also closed above that 20-day moving average. And uh, same story. I mean, you could say that the 20-day uh, uh, moving average held on a closing basis, but when it broke down and was uh, six points below it, it didn't feel like it was holding it. So same story here. Like I said, maybe we pull back a little bit, turn sideways for a couple days and continue to move higher. I'm not going to chase a market that just ran like this. That's for sure. The Russell 2000 has been, in my mind, a complete waste of time up and down here uh, throughout the month as uh, most of the activity uh, in this market has occurred with gaps, making it difficult to control risk along the way and gaps up and on the downside as well. We saw, we've saw seen all of these gaps. It's just really, I mean, it really kind of trades like a commodity ETF. On the positive note, we held the, uh, the anchor from this low back here. So that's positive. And we will see that the five-day moving average will be rising on Monday. So maybe a pullback and objectively, it then can get going higher. I'm most likely not going to trade it because I don't like the personality of the Russell 2000. But 100% objectively speaking, the pattern of lower highs and lower lows has been broken, and now it's set for a continuation higher. So this might end up being the better market, but I prefer a pullback that maybe tests that five-day moving average and then buy strength away from it. Not as it pulls back to it, but buy strength away from it, and then a stop would go underneath the most recent relevant higher low. For your time frame, that might be right here. For your another person's time frame, it might be here if you're buying at that point. Make the market, you know, make the trade your own, as I always like to say. Semiconductors got a little bit of a rest here today, but still a great month for the semiconductors, led of course by Nvidia. Nvidia. Uh, you know, for the month, had a, a massive month here. Um, and we are closed right at the anchor from the earnings report. So you saw a little shakeout below it during the day today in NVIDIA. Uh, maybe we start to correct a little bit in time in NVIDIA just to digest these gains, but uh, it's still clearly in a powerful uptrend. I wouldn't be a, a short seller, but that's for sure. Not with uh, the longer, more powerful trends still uh, uh, much higher. In the semiconductors, one thing we're going to want to be aware of next week, 
Uh, let's say we pull back like this, rally up, and then if we get stuck below the declining five-day moving average, then it might be due for a little bit more of a pullback. But with the longer term, you know, 20, 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, all heading higher, I'm not expecting that to happen, but I definitely want to be aware of the possibility that if we get stuck below the declining five-day moving average next week, it could lead to a little bit further uh, profit taking. At least uh, maybe just the, the rate of ascent starts to slow down. That seems reasonable for the biotechs, uh, for the, I'm sorry, for the semiconductors. For the biotechs, we did see that the pattern of lower highs and lower lows has been interrupted here. So that's a good sign here on the intermediate term time frame. Now on the daily time frame, we still have a declining 50-day moving average and we'll have a 50-day moving average declining most likely all of next week because these are five days that are getting averaged out in the five-day moving average calculation, meaning it would have to be up here just for the 50-day moving average to start to flatten out. So what I would always prefer is instead we kind of rally up a little bit and towards maybe the anchor off that high, pull back later in the week, and then in a week from now, of a week from, uh, you know, the second week of, of June, that is then perhaps the biotechs are in a better place where they could sustain a rally. Right now, if they get a rally next week, I think your stop probably goes right below here if you're looking to buy them. And uh, expect that there's likely going to be supply up in this area. So if you're that is, if you're trading it for a bounce, I think at this point it's, it's a bounce and it still needs to build a little bit before it has a solid foundation for a sustainable rally. That could come probably, you know, June 10th or 11th, somewhere around in that area. Financial stocks, uh, they had been drifting lower this week with a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average. Same story here, late day, you've got some uh, real strength in there. So maybe next week they start to settle down a little bit and then they continue to move higher. The energy names uh, got a nice bounce after that. Uh, we've been talking about the five, you know, the, the Elliott five waves. And I was thinking, I still think we might come down to the year to date anchor. Although this move today really kind of uh, put that out of the near term uh, reasonable uh, camp, meaning the direction of the lower highs and lower lows has been changed to higher highs and higher lows. So be aware of that, that uh, we have that possibility that can continue. I don't know why that uh, anchor was there, but uh, maybe we get to see a little bit of a pullback in here uh, and this finds support in this area. And then maybe it rallies up towards this level and then a higher low and then turns back around but it's still not quite viable, I don't think, um, for a sustained move. Um, the uh, gold is down to this 50-day moving average. It's seeing a little bit of profit taking and consolidation through time. I think they need some more time to digest. Let's take a look at uh, uh, Bitcoin. We'll look at the daily chart to start out. And on the daily time frame, you know, that 50-day moving average is going to uh, rise at the end of the day as we get rid of this data and average it with this data right here. So that 50-day moving average, the green line, will be rising here. We've seen really what has been a pretty uh, uh, tight consolidation in Bitcoin, and it continues to hold above the anchor from the all-time high. That's that red line. We also have a rising 20-day moving average. So it looks as though Bitcoin is getting ready. It's not quite there yet. Maybe this is a four-hour chart. And you can see we've got just a little bit of pattern of uh, lower highs and lower lows right now. But it seems as though you know, probably maybe even over the weekend uh, into early next week that Bitcoin could get going once again. The one that I have uh, the most interest in right now is Solana because Solana has been holding on the anchor from the, uh, not the all-time high, but the uh, annual high here. It's been holding that on a closing basis. It's also holding that rising 20-day moving average. That's that blue line. And this denotes where we were 20 days ago, this vertical blue line. The vertical green line shows where we were 50 days ago. So as we uh, get rid of this day right here, right now, and replace it with this one, the 50-day moving average will be rising at, uh, at, at, at the end of this uh, bar, which ends in 
I don't know, three or four hours or so. And the thing that's been holding this market back just here recently has been the anchor off of that recent high. And I kind of thought on uh, Thursday that we, the market was going to, uh, I pointed it out right in here on Twitter and saying that if it can pull back and then get going, that looks like it should be able to move higher. Instead, it just failed to do that. It's turning sideways. It's still of definite interest here to me. I lightened up on it. I have just a very small piece. I like the way it looks. Perhaps I'm being a little bit uh, more aggressive than I need to be. Realistically, uh, a stop ought to go under here. Um, I'm trying to get in big at the right time so I don't have to worry about stops. But most likely, I think getting above probably you know this peak right in here, 173 and a quarter or so, that's likely to, to get this market going, uh, the Solana at least. So that'll do it. Have a nice weekend.